Hey YouTube, I hope you have a good one. Today we are going to do something different. A few weeks ago at VidCon Australia, I met Liam, aka Seven Ferra, a great photographer and creator on YouTube. He came to my house recently, he wanted me to show him how to use After Effects to animate his photos. And we talked a lot about his creative process. And it really inspired me and made me think about the type of content I want to offer you here on this channel. You see, with my first series of videos, I really wanted to create a kind of masterclass so that everyone could learn photography, even if you don't know anything about it at all. And I spent a lot of time trying to make it visual, fun, creating a lot of animation, 3D stuff, make it fun. But in the end, it remains a very academic way of learning. And I think the way we learn today has changed. My goal here is to teach you what I know. And I like the idea that my videos can help you create and in the same time entertain you. And if there is something I really believe in, it is that you learn more by watching someone doing something, by being immersed in their creative process, in their way of thinking, than by just watching a lecture course that bombards you with a lot of information. On my fifth video, I mounted my GoPro on my camera to show you some practical cases. So here's what we are going to do. Today, without really predefined ideas, we're going to do the same thing again. Just walk around Melbourne, take a few pictures, and see what comes out of it. Okay, first stop, the train station close to my place. This kind of station is quite suitable for photography because it's an easy way to find leading lines for composing great images. Well, obviously, in that case, nothing good in these first pictures. It's difficult to get something interesting without adding a human element. Here I spotted this young girl reading alone. Okay, that sentence sounds a little bit predator who's hunting, but well, you know what I mean. To add a little depth to the leading lines, I will use the fence to get a foreground in the blur. To make it a little more dynamic, I'm finally going to break the horizon, which is a little bit flat, by using diagonal instead. The ramp seem interesting to me to use to direct the eye towards the subject in the background, the guy who recharges his Mikey card. But obviously, he is in the shade, the metal ramp reflects the sun, you got me. It's very difficult to get the right exposure in a few seconds. Come on, let's go look elsewhere. Here is an opportunity to use a frame in a frame with this metal beam. We won't let it pass. It gives a nice composition, especially with this young lady waiting in the background in the first third of the image. I just wish my main subject had a little more life in his position than the usual zombie absorbed by his phone. Hop a train leaving the station, we quickly switch to speed priority mode to be able to have a slightly longer exposure time, one quarter of a second. Nothing's crazy, but at least there's movement. I feel a little bit rusty, so what I like to do is photography is like sport, you know, you need to warm up a little bit. So just take pictures, the first picture, the first thing you see, check, 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 check. No worries if it's bad, you don't care about that. Just start to train your eyes to be, okay, now I need to think about composition and stuff like that. Okay, here we are on the CBD. Oh wow, it's almost Christmas already. We are in the city center, so there's going to be a lot of people there. Up quick picture of this young lady for an image without any interest actually. We're going to go to this little alley where there's a very good Italian restaurant hiding by the way. And I ran into this guy, all alone, eating his pizza. I don't really like the first angle I have, so I'm going to go completely the other way. A little wink with him to make sure I can take the picture because he's spotting me. And he offers me this rather interesting and lively pose. The picture is quite nice, but unfortunately my focus has missed the face just a little. It's still usable, but his eyes are slightly blurry. Too bad. Ok, a street artist like they are absolutely everywhere in Melbourne, which is totally cool, that's one of the reasons I love this city. Here I will use people's shoulders to frame my image to get this immersive feeling. See you at center place. So yes, it's very touristy, but it's also very graphic, especially since the street empties pretty fast in the evening and you can get a very good picture here. The light is great, like in that other shooting I did a few months ago. I spotted these two people eating on their balconies and tried to find the best possible angle. 
As a result, a photo that is quite original in terms of its angle, but which does not present such a great interest, impossible to identify a face. Ok, one of my big obsessions, photographing people eating in restaurants or having coffee. Don't ask me why, it's just that I like these moments of life. But again, our subject is absorbed by our phone, rather than by the idea of enjoying our coffee. Nah. And yet, I waited 10 minutes for her to move even a little bit. And in the end, I thought maybe she was a wax statue, and that's the only picture I could get. I walk in front of these large columns with this mirror-like ceiling, and that's all it takes to test a small self-portrait. Wow, such a handsome guy. I like the distortion in this image and the bluish treatment of shadows. This should please Seven Thera, who likes to give a blue tone to his photos. And the funny thing is that Liam's mantra is don't think, just do. Guess what was written on my business card when I started freelancing 10 years ago? Stop thinking, start doing. And the truth is, I got away from that, that's my biggest problem, overthinking everything. You see that's a real blockage concerning the motivation to realize but especially to finish projects and it's a big flaw that I have, the trap of perfectionism. By wanting to do too well, we do nothing. And it seems counterintuitive. But I think perfectionism is not about quality. Ah oh, shit, so much fly. Ah, welcome in Australia. Every time I do something, I like to push my limits, try to be better than the previous time, you know, just always go the extra mile. But perfectionism is not that. The danger of perfectionism is the expectation of results of a particular outcome. Never consider something as complete until it is considered perfect. And that's where the problem comes from. As an artist, it is literally impossible to look at one of his creations and say, wow, nobody can do better than that. If that's your case, mate, you have a real ego problem. You can be proud of one of your works, love what you have done, but tell yourself that it's impossible to improve it. It's something I feel so much every time, and I'm sure you see what I'm talking about. Or believe me, if you're just starting out, it's something you're going to feel if you want to become a creative person. Perfectionism is just an excuse to not finish a project and ultimately not to start anything. And it's time to change location a little. Up a little picture of the tram by the way. It's a street photography classic, but all trams always offer interesting colors and textures. A second picture from a more dramatic point of view, kneeling near the ground and using the widest angle at my disposal, here only 28mm. The photo would have had more strength and impact with a very wide angle. Go to Chinatown, a place I love in Melbourne. A small cultural side, it is the oldest Chinatown in the Thousand Hemisphere. Yeah, you're welcome. I love Chinatown because, first of all, here again, it's full of really fantastic colors and textures, but also because it's a place where life is everywhere on the street, not hiding in buildings. The inside of restaurants is visible. Often we see people cooking, moving, eating, playing. In one word, living. It's really this kind of places you have to look for street photography. It's impossible not to bring back at least a few good pictures. First picture selected, this one. A priori, nothing extraordinary. But I don't know, there is a very cinematic side to this image. Very mysterious that tells me something. Storytelling, the most important point in an image. Another interesting picture. I like the framing, all the information in the background, the contrast of the different areas of light. His expression is correct, but again, too much haste on my part and I didn't check that the focus was well done on his face. Ah, I hate myself when that happens, so it's definitely not an image I'll publish. Fail. We live in an incredible and fantastic world where you can discover the works of artists from all over the world. Never before have we seen such a proliferation of possible sources of inspiration. But at the same time, all this noise, it necessarily generates the feeling of comparing yourself to another, of seeing all these people that we will ourselves consider better than we are. Result expectation. We let the pleasure of creation be based on its final quality, which is relative, rather than focusing on the pleasure of the creative process. Forget the result you fantasize about having. Forget the comparison with what the other does. Forget the fact that people can judge you, all this bullshit. Do your best, give yourself 100% every time. But allow yourself to fail, even if you have done your best. Because failing doesn't exist when you create. 
take this video for example. I've never vlogged before. I have so much work this day that I haven't taken any personal pictures like this just for myself in months. Is the result going to be good? I freaking don't know, but I can tell you one thing. I take a real pleasure to do it. Okay, small assessment of our photo escapade. One hour and finally two photos that I find correct. First of all, this image taken in Collingwood with this very particular light effect. Again, it definitely tells a story and the natural contrast between the bright and the shaded areas is great. Nice image. But my favorite is this one. On the one hand, because I love playing with reflection, I stood in front of the restaurant and tried to find an interesting angle in the reflection of the window to get this guy hitting and merge him with the street behind me. And on the second hand, there are so much interpretation and reading possible between him, absorbed by his phone, the handless movement of the characters in the background, and this second guy that looks back but don't stop walking. I let you find your own allegory, but the photo lesson of the day is this. No matter the technical quality of a photo, the most important thing is what it tells. Wow, there are already more than 500 of us on the channel in only 3 months and 10 videos. So thank you mates, I love you. Tell me if you like this format in the comment section. Today it was just a little test, but my idea is that to bring you with me so you can see my creative process. I usually do portrait and fashion, but I'm not stuck with a particular genre of photography, so it can be an opportunity to do everything from food photography or architecture. There are a million things to do. And I'm talking about photos, but I will do the same for videos every time I go shooting, whether it's commercials or short movies. Bam, a little vlog. Or if you want to see some of my short films, you have a playlist here on the channel. Some of them are old, they are in French, but with subtitles. Anyway, give me your opinion in the comments, but tell yourself that whatever you think, I love doing that video and that's all that matters. And that's the kind of mentality you should have too. Stop thinking, start doing. If you want to subscribe, don't hesitate, but remember to activate the little bell and especially like this video because it will make my granny very, very proud of me. Cheers mate, keep on creating. Surprised if I'm not here when you